welcome back. Before the break, we spoke about how autos has come out of a long, uh, you know, degrowth cycle. Uh, rhythm of Morgan Stanley is with us sitting here. Rhythm, what do you feel? You think that this yeah, is I the agree. time to buy? Yeah, I agree, actually. I think uh, we've been in a 10-year down cycle, actually, not just five. And um, there's a huge amount of pent-up demand. And discretionary incomes are rising. India has crossed that threshold of $2,000 per capita income. At that point, a lot of these things actually will, you know, see uh, exponential growth. So it uh, comment I'd make about discretionary consumption in general and autos in specific. Only thing you have to be careful about the electric vehicle disruption. So in the auto parts industry, you can buy a lot of companies that will not be touched like tires by electric vehicle disruption because you need tires whether it's electric or non-electric. What, what else, Rhythm, is uh, top of mind? Real estate. Uh, I real think estate. real estate looks good. Again, very similar theme to autos. Of course, stocks have done very well. So you buy your stocks when the valuations you know, are in your favor. You think there's a longer runway for uh, which yeah. will last the cycle? I, I think residential, cons cons uh, residential demand is just about starting uh, and is probably entering into a long-term uh, up cycle. So we should see a fairly good, uh, and this is a little different from the 0307 cycle where uh, where developers focused on buying land at cheap prices and then you know making money out of it. Now it's a more conventional real estate sector which is driven by turnover, mm. so volume. Sure. So I think they've matured as a uh, real estate industry and this looks quite interesting. Rhythm, uh, defense is emerging as a big sector, right? Yeah. Uh, we we had uh, Ramesh uh, Damani last year. He was making this point that you know that this could be a massive sector. Uh, uh, initially, of course, just one or two stocks, but now this list is expanding, uh, and some serious investments coming in this space. Uh, are you bullish here? Yeah, see, Anuj, uh, you can trade there. Uh, I'm not so sure about the secular story in terms of stock market. Because usually it's a difficult business. Revenues are lumpy, working capital cycles are long, uh, return on capital gets challenged, you're dependent on the government for your order book. And a lot of balance sheets are stretched also. Yeah, so, yeah, so you know, it's a, yeah, there is a, there is a, there is a flavor right now which will probably go on for a while and of course there is a story out there, but making money in the stock market is a little, uh, you know, different. Mm. So, I wouldn't, puncture the story right now. I think there's some legs left, but uh, longer term, I like to focus on businesses that generate return on capital, have tight balance sheets, don't have long term, long working capital cycles, don't have lumpy revenues. These are easier businesses to own and sleep on. Nidham, lastly, before we let you go, uh, what about the mid cap and small cap? Because in your reports also, you keep uh, you know advocating that there is still a lot of room for mid caps yeah. and small caps yeah. to do well. And there is a larger audience in CNBC who, looks, who tracks mid caps and small caps. Yes, yeah. yeah, so Nimish, when the profit cycle is on its ascent, it will uh, favor mid caps and small caps. Those companies will obviously, you know, now see the share of profits were at a, uh, you know, the share of large company profits were elevated mm. uh, two years ago. Now that has corrected a fair bit. Uh, but I think uh, mid caps and small caps will still go faster. Is that what what we saw in 2003-2008? The mid cap yeah, small cap party had a huge yeah, uh, outperformance over large caps. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We saw that, and uh, it is but natural, right? It's mm. much easier if you, to grow if you're a small company than if right. you're a large company. Mm. Also, the other thing is that in the last 10 years, when India was in a growth slowdown, uh, large companies gained a lot of share because right. they didn't have balance sheet stress. Right. A lot of small companies lost share because they had balance sheet stress. They had to deal with the GST transition. A lot of that is now in the bag. Okay. Okay. So we're wrapping up with the show. One word answer. Diwali is not too far away. So 19,000 on the Nifty or 17,000? Sonia, how does it matter what the index does? <laughs> Stay put there, be a long-term investor. Equity is only for long-term investing that. That and, long and the result will be good. <laughs> I keep telling my folk, everybody is going to die, but dying poor is a sin. Die rich. I mean, I, I, I like this version of Rhythm. There's a, a bit of a philosopher in him, right? I mean, I like it. I like it. It's a, it's morbid, Rhythm, the, morbid philosopher. Not morbid. I mean, I rhythm, the, the, problem, the problem in Rhythm in India, long-term is... Three days. <laughs> no, 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 that's not true. Uh, and sorry, I may be extending this show for a while, but you know, somebody was challenging me about domestic flows, saying that this balloon will get uh, punctured. And I said, listen, India has 150 years of equity investing culture. Uh, and those who don't have memory, in 1992, just before the Harshad Mehta, you know, bull market ended, 
25% uh, of household savings were going into equity. Wow. Mm -hmm. Just to give you mm -hmm. the context in today's terms, yeah. $700 billion is household saving, 25% of that is almost $200 billion. We are nowhere yeah. there, yeah. we are still scratching the surface. So. <laughs> I told you Rhythm was in a good mood today, right? Yes. Okay, on that very optimistic note, Rhythm, thanks a lot for joining in. And you folks, have a great weekend. Thanks for watching Editor's Roundtable.